Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021. And we are on day 169. And uh, we're visiting Proverbs 27, 28, and 29 today. You think we'd be finishing up Proverbs uh, soon, but we're going to take a detour to Ecclesiastes after today. So let's get right into this. Proverbs 27, verse 1. And again, as we go through Proverbs, um, we cannot, I mean, it's a wealth of wealth of stuff here. Um, we don't have time to go through all of it. So I, I'm, uh, I'm picking out the things that really um, they have to do with relationship or, or close to it or something that is really outstanding for us just to mention. So here in verse one, um, <clears throat> control is an illusion. I, I hope you understand that. Um, the only thing that we control is ourselves. That's, that's all we have. And in, even with that, uh, when we um, discover Christ and when we fall in love with him and we trust him, uh, then we know that what he wants for us is so much more than what we want for ourselves. So every day we surrender our control uh, to him. And, um, and that's, that, that's what's important. Um, but everything around us, e even our children, guys, let's be honest. Um, uh, a ch a children, children desire nothing more than to throw off control. They want independence. They demonstrate that all the time. Uh, and what we want to do is grow them to such a point that they understand about love, um, love honoring, um, that will will have them um, make alignment with us because they they trust us. But if we ever break that trust, um, that that's that's a problem. So, oh man, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. So let's just leave it at, at that control is an illusion. We're not meant to control anybody. We are meant to be witnesses. Uh, to, to Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. So it says here, don't brag about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day will bring. Yeah, that whole control thing comes out of that. <laughs> yeah, don't brag about tomorrow. Yeah, you guys can't control tomorrow. I can't control tomorrow. We can't control what's going to happen. Uh, we can't control our children. We can't control the government. We can't control anything, and we're not designed to. Uh, but just so that you um, you can think about that. You know, we can make our plans, uh, but the Lord has to guide our, our steps in them. <clears throat> in verse six, we're looking at uh, healthy friendships. Um, that's what we need. We need, guys, we need to build networks of, of friends, um, the friends that we pour ourselves into and who pour themselves into us. Uh, it makes us stronger. It makes us better. It gives us avenue to pour out his, his blessings. And so we see here, trustworthy are the bruises of a friend. Excessive are the kisses of an enemy. And uh, yeah, so things happen in, in friendship, but when they're, when they're friends, man, it's, it's better to be hurt by a friend. Um, that's what Solomon is saying here. It's better to be hurt by a friend than to, uh, than to be blessed by an enemy. Isn't that interesting? In uh, verse 10, again, going with this whole, we need a good network of friends. Don't desert your friend or a friend of your family. Don't go to your relative's house when disaster strikes. Better a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. And, and this, is, this is something important as, as we look at relationships and, and the fact everything is based on relationships. It's we often want it to be just based on us and God, but it's not. It's based on uh, us and God and us and others. And, and he expects us to have um, these, these friendships. And we don't, we don't, in this day and age, we, it's a lot of superficial stuff that we, we do. We don't really go into the depth of what friendship should be. And, and when we look at the faithfulness that we're supposed to have with friends, so you see that don't desert your friend or a friend of your family. There was a time I think we understood that. And I still think that people, there are people who understand that today, really good quality people, but a lot of us have lost that and uh, we've become superficial in it. Um, verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens a friend. So yeah, friends with different perspectives help. 
So this is one of one of our downfalls is that we want to be homogeneous. We want we want to be surrounded by people who think like us, people who act like us, people who dress like us, and people who talk like us. Um, that's what we're looking for because there's less there's less um, tension if you want that. Some people call that toxic, but that's not toxic. When somebody doesn't agree with you or somebody does something different than you, that's that's not toxic. Toxic is when it involves hatred. But friends can do this. Friends can be different. Friends can can bring something different to the table and you can appreciate that and love them for that. Now, that's not a toxic environment. Toxic is a hatred thing. Um, then look at this in verses 23 to 27. There's there, This is solid financial wisdom. Just, just listen to this for a second. And you may need to meditate on this for a little while. Know your flock well. Pay attention to your herds. For no treasure lasts forever, nor a crown generation after generation. When the grass grows, goes away, new growth appears, and the plants of the hill are gathered. Then the lambs will provide your clothes, and the goats will be the price of your fields. There will be enough goat's milk for your food for the food of your house and to nourish your young women. And, and I've heard uh, teachings on this from, from some really solid uh, spirit filled um, and, and financially independent people um, that, that just talk about this, that, uh, you, you know, you need a, a diversity of income, um, but you have some foundational income. In, in, in this case, what, what he's talking about is basically your, your farm. You know, you've got your lambs, your goats, uh, they're going to provide you with uh, clothes and, and, and with milk. Um, and, you know, and it, it's, it's just, it doesn't take much to look after them. And that's what, well, that's what you need. You need a, a base finance coming in that is pretty um, indestructible. Like it, it, it may not provide everything that you want, but it will provide what you need. And then you can have some other incomes that will will add and, and can come and go. Now, those things can can change, and it's it's really when you when you reflect on it, there's a lot of wisdom here uh, that Solomon had gained. And when you look at his financial dealings, you'll know that he had um, different incomes from different sources, uh, so he always had money coming in. So, yeah, that that is a topic all on its own. <laughs> it takes people of greater insight on this than me um, to share those things, but uh, just so that you know that those principles are contained there. Then over into chapter 28, uh, verse one. Um, when, when you listen, when you're standing on the rock, when you know that the decisions you're making are based on, on what has been revealed to you by the spirit, when you know that you're living according to the word, when you know that you're in the right relationship with the father, there's just a boldness that comes into that. And we see that here, the wicked run away, even though no one pursues them, but the righteous are as confident as a lion. Even when you get falsely accused of things or just simply accused of things, um, whether it's understanding or not, man, you don't need to lose sleep over it uh, unless you've done something wrong. And then the best thing to do is deal with that. If you, if you are in the wrong, don't, don't pretend, like deal with it um, because um, judgment will come on you as a result of that thing. Um, and, and judgment isn't condemnation. Judgment is, is uh, the result of that thing. Your judgment is, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if you don't look after your health, you're going to get sick. If you, if you don't uh, get proper sleep, you're going to get sick. The judgment is the sickness because you didn't judge yourself because you didn't take care of those things. That's it. But it's not a condemnation. It's not the Lord saying, you wicked sinner, I'm going to punish you. It's not that whatsoever. Um, so, so understand then that if there is something that you've done amiss, if there's something that's not quite right, um, and deal with it before there's consequences to it. But those who are walking in the righteous, who are, whose everything is based on that righteousness, righteousness being the Father's heart, uh, then you've got boldness, you, and you're absolutely confident in everything that you do. Look in verse 5. Evil, pe evil people don't understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand everything. It, you know, it, it only comes uh, by revelation. Uh, it, it's, um, 
you you can have the Bible, you can read the Bible, you can, there's certain principles that you can readily understand because they're surface principles, but there's other things that have to come by revelation, which is given to you by the Holy Spirit, still in the word. It's just that uh, you're seeing the depth of it and the width of it and the height of it. Um, you know, people who are not concentrating on the Lord don't have that key. They don't have that set of glasses. They don't have the eyes to be able to see it. But those who seek the Lord um, are given that. And it's as simple as that. Verse 13, um, it clean up the mess, right? Those who hide their sins won't succeed. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. It all, all that we're to, are asked to do is be honest. Dad takes care of the, 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 um, the consequences of the sins. Like he, he deals with those things. Okay. He takes care of those things. Um, he doesn't want us to hide it. He wants us to confess it. He wants us to talk to him about it. He wants us to be honest about it. Uh, so, so it says those who hide their sins will succeed, but those who confess and give them up will receive mercy. Yeah. Uh, verse 18. Um, yeah, this comes up again and again and again. It's guys, those who walk in innocence will be saved. But those who go on twisted paths will fall into the grave. Yahweh's path is the best path. It's the path that is for you and it's not against you. It's a path to build you up and not tear you down. It's a path to increase you, to see you prosper, to see you increase. That's what it's there for. And we're not talking, we're not limited to finances. It's in every area of your life. Man, I, I'll tell you, I don't have a lot of finances, but I have I have everything I need and, and beyond because the, the blessings that I have, some are, are blessed with, with uh, finances, um, uh, but, but because their heart is closed in certain areas, they, they don't have some other blessings. My, 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 my life overflows with blessings. And I wake up every morning and just, I'm overwhelmed by, by the, the blessings that have, he has given to me. Um, and, and uh, you know, whatever I need financially, it's there. Always, it's there. So um, his path. There's nothing like his path, guys. It's, there's nothing that can compare. Verse 25. Um, th there's a lot of Proverbs along this idea. Greedy people stir up conflict, uh, but those who trust the Lord become prosperous. And just what I was just talking about, it's just, it's there. Where prosperity comes in many, many different forms. Um, don't, uh, don't dismiss financially. Um, at all because he he wants to glorify himself through you he he does um it's and it's it's not something that listen all you have to do is plant the seed that's all you have to do he he takes care of the rest you just put your hand to the plow he takes care of the rest you just um work that's all you have to do and he multiplies that work that's how his prosperity works and, and you, you need to trust him in that in verse 27 um those who give to the poor, again, there's a lot of Proverbs along this area. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who turn a blind eye will be greatly cursed. Generosity is, is the mark of a believer. Um, looking after the poor is a mark of a believer. Um, uh, being involved in, in meeting people's needs, it's, it's a mark of the believer. Uh, it's, um, that's what he gives for us to do. It's what his, what his, his heart is so close to. Okay, and then in, in uh, chapter 29 here, the last chapter we'll deal with today, um, this, this really, there's a question here, uh, and, and this is a, a good question to ask. Is there a place of no return? It says, one who stays stubborn after many corrections will be suddenly broken beyond healing. And, and the reason I ask this is because the whole reason Israel uh, was raised up was because those nations, the seven nations that they had to displace, um, Yahweh had given them hundreds of years uh, to correct their behavior, and and He waited till they had had completed their evil. They had completed their wickedness. There was nothing left for them to do to offend Yahweh, and and He waited. And he was patient during that time. But once that arrived, that was it. There was there was no no return after that. They, he 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 was just going. But yet, there's other times like with with um, Nineveh, um, where, where Jonas 
um, Jonah, sorry, was was sent. Um, you know, when when he came in and pr- gave that that announcement of judgment, and and the king turned around and said, "Hey guys, let's let's uh, let's repent, and and maybe um, you know Yahweh will have mercy on us." And and he did. Um, so this is a, a, a there seems to be um, this point of no return. But at times, there's also evidence that it's that's not for us. We can't judge that. We we don't know. Obviously, here it says that there's there's you know he will send correction. He will ha- try to get us to turn uh, away from our destruction. He he will do this. But there comes a point where um, there's no more healing. There's no healing opportunity left. Uh, we see that um, with. Uh, um, Sodom and Gomorrah. We we see that with the seven nations, um, but yet we we can hold on to these encouraging times as well um, of Nineveh. Nineveh is a big lesson for us, and and uh, it's not for us to ever give up hope on anybody. It's not. It's the Lord knows um, what those points are. We don't. So be careful uh, in bringing that judgment. Okay, in verse seven. Um, Again, it's it's filled. I mean, absolutely filled. Scripture is filled with this. The righteous know the rights of the poor, but the wicked don't understand. Yahweh's heart is for the poor. For the poor, uh, and the poor include the, the widows and, and the orphans who, who do not have um, anybody to, to fight for them and to, to work um, for their betterment. Uh, the immigrants who, who struggle um, it's always a it's always a struggle for any immigrant anywhere who's had to leave their life behind and and start all over again, and so yeah, that's hard is towards them. We better understand that. Uh, in verse uh, thirteen, um, yeah, consider the truth of this: the poor and their oppressors have a common bond. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. Yeah. Something just to consider there. Leave just that's that's one you can go back on and meditate on. Um, and this is the verse that haunts me the most, always um, needing, always leaning into wanting um, to understand the vision. The vision isn't mine. It's not. It's not. It's, he lends me the vision. He lends me his vision. He lends me. I may have ideas within that vision that I can run past him and he's yay or nay. Um, but when it comes to, um, like, I, I, I can enter into a place and he will give me vision for that place. Um, I can even take a wrong turn and end up somewhere that in, initially I wasn't supposed to be. But he will give me vision for that place because he wants to use me wherever I am. But where there's no vision, the people get out of control. But whoever obeys instruction is happy. That is important. Uh, We need vision. Uh, We need people who can understand vision and explain vision to us. Uh, Verse 25, and this is a woe. (laughs) Where there's no vision. Oh, you know what? I didn't change up the verse. I am sorry. Here we are. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, people are trapped by their fear of others. Those who trust the Lord are secure. Yeah, that's the woe there. People are trapped by their fears of others. Those who trust the Lord are secure. Because we, we know. We know that he's our protector. We know that he's got us. And, and there's nobody who can do anything against us. Um, not, where, not where it's important. And um, that's interesting to, to understand where, where fear is rooted, isn't it? Um, and this sums up our, our relationship with the world. Uh, the unjust person is, is disgusting to the righteous. Okay? So where, where you see in, injustice, where you see things that... Um, it's just there's an unfairness. Uh, there's things that happen to people. It's not their fault. You just you see that injustice. It should be disgusting to you. You should be upset by that. And, and then the flip side is the straight path is disgusting to the wicked. 
The straight path is disgusting to the wicked. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to leave that right there. Um, maybe that brings a little bit of perspective to you. Eh? So thanks for, for being part of this today. I, I pray that there's a, a lot there to, to chew on. And there's probably things that you, uh, that really stood out for you. We just can't cover something like Proverbs. We just can't cover it all in, in one of our recordings. Um, but I, I hope that the ones that we highlighted uh, were significant and other ones stood out for you as well. And um, tomorrow uh, we get to uh, <laughs> just be in a good mental state tomorrow, okay? Because as we go into Ecclesiastes, just make sure that you are solid uh, with the Lord and uh, ask him just to um, gird you uh, for the scriptures tomorrow. You guys be blessed, be encouraged, uh, love each other. I love you guys. And uh, we'll catch up tomorrow.